but everything changed quickly after losing her, of course. I remember my dad saying to me, I want you to be prepared. Are you guys training on ownership stuff? You know, where are you at? And I always kind of pushed it off. I didn't want to go there in my head. Her health kind of declined pretty quickly. You wait a long time to really realize that you might lose this person. I'm doing a disservice to my team and to this legacy that she left if I don't figure out real quick if this is what I want to do. Knew in that moment that when I got home that I either had to rise up or get out of the way and let someone else do it. And I was not going to get out of the way and let someone else take over my mom's legacy. I went all in. That's exactly what I did. I just decided I'm where I need to be. I love this. I can do this because I think a lot of it was self-doubt. It wasn't that I didn't have a passion for health and fitness. I definitely did. It was, can I do this? huge shoes to fill. But since that moment, I mean, no dabbling. Welcome back to another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. I am your host, Mary Catherine. And today I am in Cancun, Mexico for a Fit Body Mastermind as I'm recording this. And I have a very special guest. I have Sarah Dumont. And Sarah is a young entrepreneur who at the ripe age of 27 took over Westminster Fit Body Bootcamp from her late mother, Lisa Dumont. Their Westminster location in a small town in Vermont recently celebrated 13 years in business. As one of the original Fit Body locations, their program has served and supported thousands of clients in their local community in their pursuit of optimal health, mind, body, and spirit. After serving their FitBody location for just one year as the director of operations, Sarah stepped into the role of ownership after losing her mother in September of 2021 to a long battle with cancer. Since then, Sarah sold one of the two locations her mother had opened and with the support of her team, has grown their Westminster location by almost 50%, both in memberships and in revenue. Prior to stepping up to, up to her role as a gym owner, Sarah worked for F-L-I-K Hospitality and served as the Corporate Catering Director for Fidelity Investments in their Boston headquarters. As an avid athlete, gym rat, and health enthusiast, she has soaked up every moment of creating synergy between her lifelong passion and this business endeavor. Outside of the day-to-day -day operations as a gym owner, Sarah's primary focus is personal and professional development through the study of leadership, along with her work towards becoming a certified wellness coach through NASM. So welcome today's guest. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, MK. I'm absolutely honored to be here. Yes, I'm excited to dive into everything you've been doing over the last three years. But before we do that, I know about your journey, your ownership journey after losing your mother. But I want to talk more about what you were doing prior to that, because that's, you know, those are big shoes to fill. And so what were you doing Huge before shoes. your journey with FitBody? <laughs> yeah. Um, so prior to FitBody, I was actually working in the corporate food and beverage service industry. I had earned a degree in sports entertainment and event management from Johnson and Wales in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Shout out Jewu. And shortly after graduating, well, directly after graduating, I was accepted into a really amazing manager and training program with Flick Hospitality. And I started with them in Boston in a law office as the corporate ca uh, cafe manager and was soon promoted into their catering manager, which was a huge win for me. I always wanted to get into corporate catering and events, yeah. hence my degree. And um, my most recent stint with them, the, the last promotion I received was into the catering director role with Fidelity Investments. And actually prior to moving home to Southern Vermont and New Hampshire, I was getting ready to move to Portland, Maine, where my partner was living at the time. We had been doing the long distance thing for a bit and we were just getting ready to kind of join forces. And I remember the night like it was yesterday, we were on the phone kind of talking about, you know, houses and, yeah. you know, this big move that I was going to do and kind of leaving this career that had become my big first career after college. And he said, you know, if you want to move home to be with your family, at this point, my mom already had her diagnosis. Mm. He said, I would go with you. And I kind of thought about it and that was all I needed to hear. And I'm so grateful for his support because if it weren't for him kind of encouraging me to do that, I wouldn't be sitting here today, of course. Mm. And I remember the very next day being so nervous to tell my family 
because I knew that my mom was not going to want me to kind of, you know, veer from this path right. that I had set up. And I, re I remember sitting at my kitchen table and calling her and we're having a conversation. And I said, I decided I want to move home. And she said, no, you're not. <laughs> That was her. And I said, yes, I am. I said, I really want to be with you right now. You know, at this point, she was, you know, still fairly healthy, but the diagnosis yeah. was on the table. And I said, I just, I want to be close to you. And ironically enough, I had no intentions of working for her and moving home. I was looking for other jobs and, you know, wasn't really sure how that would work in terms of our dynamic and me working for her. And one thing led to another. She really needed kind of some support in the office. And I knew that if she didn't have that support with her two locations, that she was not going to take the time to heal mm -hmm. because she was so giving and all about everyone else. <clears throat> so that was how I made my decision and off we went. Wow. And I don't know why, but like I could just really sense that feeling of joy in your voice when you talked about how your partner said like let's move home yeah like almost I, I know that feeling because after we you and I like we're almost the same age like we've kind of gone through you know similar stages of life at the same time and after college for me I lived right outside of Washington DC I had a good job and my well now husband but fiance at the time we sat down one night and I was like, I really want to move home and be close to my family. Mm. And I thought he's going to say no, he's not going to want to do that. And he said yes. And I just remember too calling my family and saying like, I want to move home and be close to you guys. And thank goodness we did because that's where we ended up opening our first Fit Body location. Wow. But just having that right partner and that support is like just so amazing. Yeah. And the fact that he was like there to support you in that journey and that you didn't really even know what you were going to do when you got there. No. But you were like, I think this is the right decision that I need to make at this time. Yeah. And there's always that thought and maybe you can relate to this based on that of moving home, yeah. you know, like it right. almost felt like, like you were going back. Yeah. Like you were taking a step back. Yeah. yeah. And it took me some time after moving home to really get past that and, you know, just kind of establish my community and my new life there that I realized, right. okay, this is not who I was when I left. Mm -hmm. And right. um, also it helped that I grew up in Rockingham, Vermont, and where we live is right on the Connecticut River. So mm -hmm. we're right on the edge of New Hampshire and Vermont. So technically, I didn't move back home. I moved to New <laughs> Hampshire, <laughs> but my business is in Vermont. So anyways, just it was a completely different ball game and yeah. definitely one of the best decisions I ever made. Yeah. So you move back home and then you start working. What, what did you start doing at first with the Fit Body location? So it was a whirlwind when I moved home for so many reasons. My mother was a whirlwind for one in the best way possible, but she had opened a second location and she had her diagnosis and it was in the middle of COVID. Mm. And so it was kind of this director of operations role. Um, but the really interesting part about it was that our overlap was quick because I moved home, you know, I started working for her at late summer 2020 and she passed in 2021. And amidst that year, she was, you know, getting this other location up and off the ground, but also she was traveling back and forth to Arizona for treatment every 11 days. Wow. So she was going to Phoenix three days treatment, eight days off back home. So it was here and there and everywhere. Um, and so, Honestly, it's so hard to even remember what was going on because when I first arrived home, my focus was really my family. Yeah. I mean, I was supporting my parents with, you know, animal care while they were traveling back and forth to Arizona and doing a little bit here at one location and, and you know, primarily helping in Westminster. And so, I mean, the director of operations role obviously doesn't even really exist mm -hmm. in our organization, but um, it was kind of this merger role of, just you doing know, whatever, right? To be doing done. whatever, supporting my mom, supporting my family, and it's yeah. you know at that point my focus wasn't working. My focus was really being there with her, right? Um, but everything changed quickly right. after losing her, of right. course. So before we go there, what was your like health and fitness routine like before Fit Body? Because you were thrown into an industry that you weren't currently working in, and so it's like you know, while you were able to use some of the skills that I'm sure you developed in your other role, it's a new industry. And so what were your feelings around now working in a fitness industry and what was your health and fitness like? Yeah, well, I grew up around health and fitness for sure. It's always been a part of my life. You know, my mom has always worked in health and fitness. 
my parents were always like the healthy fit couple <laughs> and you know I was always the kid in the cafeteria unpacking the really weird items from my Celery lunchbox. Celery and carrots instead <laughs> yeah. of chips. <laughs> yeah so um, always you know obviously that influence was huge in my life and I remember you know growing up after school riding the bus to various studios in California where my mom worked and you know kind of hanging out while she would do personal training or group X and so always around it. And of course, I kind of grew up in my later years in her fit body. I mean, yeah. she would actually execute boot camp sessions for my soccer team as part of our pre of, uh, preseason, excuse me. So always around. But for me, I mean, I started playing sports at the age of five and I was really an avid athlete, as you said, all through high school, three sport athlete. And it actually wasn't until my senior year of high school, freshman year of college, that I 100% gained the, fe the freshman 15, <laughs> probably like the freshman 20. And for the first time in my life, I didn't have sports to just naturally keep me right. fit and healthy. And I could see it and feel it in my body. And I had this kind of aha moment, like, oh my goodness, like I actually have to develop a health and fitness routine now to stay lean and healthy. And so when I was living in Providence, I joined the local Planet Fitness and I got super into weightlifting. Again, my dad was always into weightlifting, him and my mom. They met at a gym. They got engaged at a gym. I mean, it's you know, it's a gym family for sure. Um, it's a gym love story. It's a, totally a gym love story. And so I got super into lifting. And a couple months after that, I started to kind of dive into the nutrition piece more. Um, realizing that I needed to feel my body a certain way to mm. achieve certain body comp changes. Um, but then when I moved to Boston and started that manager and training program, my fitness routine took a nosedive mm. because I was commuting for a while from, from Providence where I was still living to Boston, leaving my house at 4.30 in the morning, getting home at 8.30 at night, wow. working really long hours, really, really demanding job. Um, and I didn't have the time. Yeah. And so I really do have that empathy when clients say, I, I don't, don't have time, time, but we still have a duty and obligation to find find a way, right? So I started working out in the just small little gym that they had built out in my in my job at the time, which as you may know, are usually pretty subpar. Right. It was really limited. So that yeah. opened up a whole new world of me needing to really learn and explore and figure out how I could make it work with really limited equipment and then actually at the very end of my time living in Boston was the middle of COVID and I started doing the boot camp zoom sessions with my mom and our team and surprise surprise I had great results and my body responded really well to those so I kind of segued into that yeah. you know fit body style training before moving home that's awesome thank you for sharing all that because I think it's just valuable for our listeners to know you know, what your take on health and fitness is and what it was at the time and like what your background was with it because everybody has a different journey and mm. some people it's like, you know, they weren't actually gym rats before right. owning a gym or right. before working in a gym. It was like that was maybe their introduction to health and fitness. So I think it's valuable for our listeners to know that. Yeah. And so you start working as this you per this person that wore all the hats, your mom's <laughs> assistant, the director of operations, uh, you're helping out with both locations, and then um, your mom passes. What? Tell us what was it like leading up to that point? What were those conversations like between her and you and the team about like what did she want this business to continue to be? What did she want her legacy to be? And talk to us a little bit about that. It was very challenging. Um, she, I think in her heart, always wanted me to take over. I Aww. think she was bringing me home and she had this plan. plan. And, and she had said that before, you know, I want you to take this location. And there, there was another member who had expressed interest in starting a gym with her husband. And I want her to take that location. And I was like, no, mom, like, I'm not, <laughs> no, that's not why I came back to help you. And, you know, the challenging part of it was, that we didn't really talk about it. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, her health kind of declined pretty quickly. And when someone is sick and you start to realize, you know, you, you wait a long time to really realize that you might lose this person. Right. And so I remember my dad saying to me, you know, I want you to be prepared. Are you guys training on ownership stuff? You know, where are you at? And I always kind of pushed it off. I didn't want to go there in my yeah. head. But I remember, you know, one day when she was in hospice and I remember sitting next to her on the laptop, I had come up to hang out with her for the day and I was on the laptop working, trying to do payroll. 
And at this point, she was in a pretty significant amount of pain and kind of in and out of sleep. And I remember I needed a code to her phone or to, you know, I needed some piece of information that she literally couldn't give me in that moment because Mm. she was, you know, sick and sleeping. And I remember just having this aha moment of, oh, my goodness, like this is real. I don't have half of the stuff that I need to take this business over and feel successful. So Mm. there was very little overlap in terms of ownership duties. I mean, again, it was really just that director of operations role. And when she passed, there was so much to sort through. Mm. I mean, her affairs weren't really in order. So, of course, my dad and I really kind of um, tackled that together. But just, you know, going going into work each day and having this list of like, okay, I have to call the Amazon and cancel the account and all that little stuff, right? And when someone's sick, you're not talking about what the password is to the payroll company no. or where each team member stands with their development and what she was thinking for next steps. So it's just, it was a lot of unspoken, just staying present, being with her there in her last days and trusting that I would figure it out. Yeah. And you know, the more I think about that, the more I realize that's what most owners do. They don't have a mom who's sitting there giving them, you know, the keys to the castle with a, you know, alien abduction manual to tell them exactly how to do everything. And so I know that I'm not alone in that feeling of, I just got to figure it out. Right. You know, I mean, luckily I had a lot of support from my team and my dad, but there was just so many unknowns and, um, yeah, it it was a really big challenge for, Mm. for a while. Yes. Did you feel like you had this unspoken pressure as well to live out the legacy that she had created and make it better? And did you feel like there were decisions that you had to make and you just asked yourself, like, what would my mom do? Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, the first one was really from when she passed in 2021 to May of 2022, when we went to Scottsdale for World Conference, I was floundering. You know, I was having thoughts like, is this what I want? Is this my dream? Is this like, what am I doing? Am I going to be doing this in three years? What's the plan? Yeah. And I remember sitting in Scottsdale and Bryce giving his speech and in with, you know, passion and conviction saying, stop dabbling, go all in. And Mm. that spoke to me so hard. I remember thinking I'm doing a disservice to my team and to this legacy that she left if I don't figure out real quick if this is what I want to do and I knew in that moment that when I got home from that conference that I either had to rise up or get out of the way and let someone else do it and I was not gonna get out of the way and let someone else take over my mom's legacy and from that moment on I went all in that's exactly what I did I just decided you know I'm where I need to be I love this I can do this because I think a lot of it was self-doubt it wasn't that I didn't have a passion for health and fitness I definitely did it was can I do this? And as you said, huge shoes to fill. Um, But since that moment, I mean, no dabbling. Mm, That's such a great message for our audience because there are too many people that I see today where maybe it's like a side hustle or something like they want to start a new job or a new career, make this big change. And they just start to, they dip their toes in it and they start to dabble in it, Mm. but they always keep it a side hustle. And the longer they dabble, the longer it's going to stay a side hustle. It's going to be a side hustle forever. And until you go all in, you'll never be able to see like the true effect and the true power that you can have. And so I think that's so valuable for our audience. And I know that that time was such a challenge. Like I know that every day was probably like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing about this? And you just Mm -hmm. had to figure it out on your own. But with the challenges, I know that there were some rewarding moments as well. So talk to us about what has been the most rewarding part of stepping into that owner role and stepping into those shoes. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I feel like a badass now <laughs> as an it. entrepreneur. Um, but I mean, initially, just kind of that push into professional and personal development. I mm. mean, I've just kind of set this new standard for myself because I have these people that are depending on me. So kind of what it's done for me personally, but outside of that, and I talk to people about this a lot with losing someone, you know, if you work a nine to five desk job and you lose a loved one, people care for a couple weeks and they stop by your desk and ask how you're doing. And then things go back to normal. Right. But, you know, the most rewarding part for me was that I had a family of, you know, amazing coaches and teammates and 277 members there with me in this grieving process. It never went back to normal. Her legacy is so alive in our gym. 
and it's it it kind of shifted that sad heavy grief of course I have my moments of course I had my moments to just just joy of everything that she created and how alive it is and you know we talk about her all the time in the space and I just feel so grateful that I have a community that helps me keep her so alive and Mm -hmm. I just empathize so much with when people lose someone and they don't have that I truly can't imagine you know loneliness with grief and and I just never had that another huge reward for me and I would be remiss not to mention it would be my relationship with my dad Mm. Um, and he was kind of a silent owner up until just very recently but you know it was me and him thick as thieves through her illness and and taking over and you know it was kind of this unspoken agreement like we got to get through this together you know we would be texting every day I think I did get one text before the 4 a.m hour but every day between four and five like what's up with the attorney who do we have to call what do we got to do and we just really leaned on each other so much and um, you know my mom and I were very close and my dad and I have always been very close too but this you know this journey with fit body and losing her really took our relationship to a whole new level as mm-hmm. friends and business partners and, and everything in between. So I'm really grateful for that. What would you tell somebody who maybe they've recently lost someone or they're in a challenging season of life and they they're having trouble just taking that next step? Because I'm sure that you had times where, as you mentioned, like you were like, okay, do I go all in or do I let somebody else take over? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in those moments you were thinking like, gosh, I just don't want to do this today. Yeah. What would you tell that person? It's not, it's not, I don't want to do this. It's when you realize, oh my gosh, I own a business and all these people are depending on me. (laughs) And I have to respond to (laughs) that. Yeah. Right. Um, I would say feel the fear and do it anyways. I Mm. think it's Susan Jeffers who says that. And love that. Feel the fear, feel the fear and do it anyways. I mean, if it's worth your while, it's going to be a challenge it's going to be so scary and there's no wrong path in life I mean there's paths that are more enjoyable there's some that are less enjoyable but I think on every single one there's a million lessons and so much to learn about yourself and others and um, just do it as they say Mm. Um, really it's it's worth it and yeah believe in yourself self-belief because your thoughts are powerful and if you believe you can do it you can And the more you let that fear and doubt creep in, the less likely you are to achieve those dreams. Mm. Feel the fear and and move on from that. I I just love that so much. So I know that you, because you post about it a lot, and I know you as a person, like you are very much dedicated to your own health habits and routines, taking care of yourself and your professional development. Talk to us a little bit about that, your healthy habits uh, around mindset, nutrition, fitness. What are some things that you do on a daily and a weekly basis that set yourself up for success? Totally, yes. I am a habit junkie. I love it. I love talking about routine. I love kind of fine-tuning my own routine. Um, Well, morning routine, right, is huge. Uh, every day I start my day the same way I wake up I drink 32 ounces of water before I have my coffee I always do meditation I always do um, professional development reading Mm -hmm. I think it was Matt Aspute who made a comment once about just you know I just read five pages a day and that I needed that because I was sitting down and reading really dense like (laughs) thanks for the feedback book and trying to read you know chapters on end and it just wasn't working but you know finding ways to make it work for you that you can keep up with but outside of that outside of the routine um, you know like I said I I hold myself to a new standard now in this Mm. role I mean when I'm in the shower I'm listening to podcasts it's like every moment I want to be listening to things whether it's you know in the background or right there in the forefront that are going to level me up yes and uh, this year for my birthday I I purchased the the wellness coach certification through NASM and that was a birthday present to myself and and you know it's been a long time since I've done a course or anything that's challenged me in that way and so that's kind of my big my big kahuna right now it's a big course and so my goal is definitely to finish that and and my goal in doing that is really to position myself as best as possible and and be as strong and and knowledgeable as possible for not only our members, but for my team and really for this planet. I mean, if we all just focus on leveling up, 
you know, my mom's mantra was healthy people, healthy planet. And it's so true. I mean, if we're really just diving in on that individual level, it's going to raise the consciousness and it's going to raise the level of everyone around us. Yes. I love how she mentioned, I love how you mentioned that you listen to podcasts in the shower because there's <laughs> so many people that they say they don't have time to read the book, to listen to the podcast, to get their workout in. We hear this all the time, but you have to make the time. Right. And I had the privilege of interviewing Craig Ballantyne earlier today, and, and he's the master of time. Right. And, he was saying like, we have to shift our mindset into making time for those things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a whole chapter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be five pages. It can be 10 minutes of a workout. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're making that time and you're staying consistent with it, it's going to get easier. It's going to become a part of your daily habits and routines. Mm -hmm. So you, I know, have a team that you manage and you have gotten really good, I'm sure, over the last three years and empowering them to lead, to be better leaders, because you have become a better le a leader in the process. How do you do that? How do you empower your leaders? Well, first of all, I just have to shout out my team because I feel like we're a rarity. Um, my head coach, Sarah, has been with us for 12 years. My two wow. part-time coaches, Coach Ann and Coach Rana, have been with us for almost 11 years and seven years, respectively. And the baby of our team has almost been with us for five years. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot that goes into keeping people for that long. I think that all that my mom did to kind of grow them, it was always we were really focused on that continued growth, definitely speaks volumes to, you know, how long they've been with us. But I feel for me really empowering your team is getting to know your team and not and constantly reminding yourself that they're not just, you know, a knob in the business, that they're real people, that they have needs, they have desires, they have things that make them tick outside of the workplace. And I feel like when you, you know, get to know your team, you can then leverage their, their strengths, mm -hmm. right? And back them up on any areas that they need improvement. Um, and also love your team. I mean, we are just, we're, we're, we're thick as thieves, we're a unit. And I really just believe that it's due to the fact that we know each other on a very personal level. We really mm. prioritize that team health. And for me, I'm also our client coordinator. And that's been a really big shift for me because as the director of operations and then, you know, as the client coordinator, a lot of my work was very take care of the client's focus. Right. And now I know in my heart that the goal for me is really at the highest level, support my team to the best I can. Mm. And I learn from them every single day. Let's be real. Every yeah. single one of them has been in my business longer than I have. Right. Right. And so that means I need to put my ego aside and learn everything that they're willing to teach me and learn from each other and hold each other to that standard. And I think that's really you know, what's allowed us to grow so much after the past couple of years is just pouring into that team. Because when you pour into your team, they turn around and pour into your clients. Mm. That's a great point. And I too have had to put my ego aside at times because I say now that I only want to hire people that are better than me because I can't be great at everything. Mm -hmm. Like I am not the master of everything. And once I realized that, and I realized there is somebody that's better than sales than me and they should be doing it, our business grew and our leadership team got better and my leadership got better. Mm -hmm. And you do really have to find those people that you can empower, but they're also going to empower you. Right. And I think that's just a very, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to, get into that mindset yeah. but once you do put that ego aside you can see your business grow and your life grow your totally. life change mm -hmm. in different ways than you never could have imagined and and also you know our team honoring the fact that they have been through everything with us with between you. you know being with my mom from the beginning like coach sarah and supporting her and opening the second location some of them were commuting back and forth to coach at both locations you know, COVID and all the demands that that asked of us in our program and, um, and then losing her. And they have been through literally the lowest lows with me. And um, I've just felt so held by them. And I, you know, my goal now is to make sure that I'm pouring into them so that they can continue feeling fulfillment, financial freedom and purpose. Yeah. And I feel that that's my purpose now. And like I said, that's been a really big shift for me. Mm. Well, that's a good segue to my next question. And that is, are there any big plans for you in the future? Where do you see yourself with your fit body journey, your personal journey, five, 10 years from now down the road? Do you oh have any big gosh. plans that you want to share? I've never been a five-year plan girl. That's for <laughs> sure. 
Um, I mean, if there's one thing I've learned over the past three years, it's that you never know what's coming down your path, right? I think it's so important to have goals for yourself, you know, especially in the business, day to day, kind of lead the team with those. But for me, I feel like it's about the way I live my life and, you know, with my heart super open. And when you vibrate at that frequency, you bring down the opportunities that are meant for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, in kind of walking away from my career, quote unquote, out of love for my family and supporting my family, that's exactly what happened. You know, it may have not been the most sensible financially or sensible in any respect, right. you know, to move home. But when you live at that level and you operate from a place of love and connection and compassion, the right opportunities will find you every time. So how's that for talking my way around not giving you my five year no, plan? No, I actually <laughs> love that because my husband and I had a, a, we thought it was a door that was open for a new business opportunity about nine months ago and it didn't end up happening. And, you know, that door closed, but then another opportunity happened that we never like thought about. We never thought would happen. And it was like, I heard this the other day from another Fit Body owner. It's like, if the doors keep opening, I'm going to keep walking through them. And so if you keep having these opportunities, in front of you, it's like, just keep moving forward mm -hmm. one day at a time, one year at a time. You don't have to have a five-year plan. <laughs> you don't have to have a five-year plan. You have to have goals for yourself to get better. Right. But you don't have to have it all figured out. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Sarah, this has been great. Uh, one question I love to ask all of my guests before we end today is, you know, on Beyond the Scale, we talk about living a life that is not defined by a number, by a metric. And so what does Beyond the Scale mean to you? To me, Beyond the Scale really means, you know, in committing to your health and functional fitness journey, you're committing to living out your purpose, you're committing to living the life of your dreams and committing to transformation, whether that's through mind, body, or spirit. Mm, I love that. Connecting all three. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. Where can our listeners find you and learn more about you? Well, I'm in Cancun right now if you want to come find me here. But on social media, you can find me. My Facebook is Sarah Dumont, just my name. Or I would love it if you would follow our business page and see what we're up to in small town Westminster, Vermont. Our Instagram is just our business name, Westminster Fit Body Boot Camp. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. As always, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Apple Podcast and Spotify and share this episode with all of your friends. Until next time, you guys.